with one voice and now with one heart. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Christians at Corinth in the third chapter. Reading from the Common English Bible. Brothers and sisters, I couldn't talk to you like spiritual people, but like unspiritual people, like babies in Christ. I gave you milk to drink instead of solid food because you weren't up to it yet. Now you're still not up to it because you are still unspiritual. When jealousy and fighting exist between you, aren't you unspiritual and living by human standards? When someone says, I belong to Paul, and someone else says, I belong to Apollos, aren't you acting like people without the Spirit? After all, what is Apollos? What is Paul? They are servants who helped you to believe. Each one had a role given to them by the Lord. I planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. Because of this, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. But the only one who is anything is God who makes it grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together. But each one will receive their own reward for their own labor. We are God's co-workers and you are God's field. God's building. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to you. So I ask you today, are you ready for more? We've spent the last several weeks talking about our baptismal covenant and how we are loyal to Jesus Christ and to the ministries of the church through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness, and mission. Now we want to move on because there's something more than just what we have, have heard in these last six weeks. There's something more that we want to take into uh, our, our spirits and allowing our spirits to grow and to prosper as the way God meant them to grow. The idea is that we're not to be attached to some... Um, person or theological position that does not help us become one in Christ Jesus. Now, I understand that when we read this text, it is a challenging one. And while I was preparing th this message, um, I came across a prayer of confession early in the week. And this is what that prayer said. Lord, so often we have allowed ourselves to become involved in pointless bickering and petty divisions that divide the body of Christ. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to mature and develop the wisdom to know when to stand firm and when to extend the same freedom of opinion we would claim for ourselves. In Christ we pray. You hear that prayer? Isn't that a powerful prayer? Does that not speak to where we are today in the life of the church? Does that not express to us where we need to get to? To be fully committed to the call of Christ in our lives, to be driven by the Holy Spirit. Guided, built up, filled with the Holy Spirit who gives us the words to speak, the actions which we should take, and the things that we can do to be deeper in love with God and helping others grow in relationship with Jesus. Now, when we read the text, one of the things that Paul's letter addresses is a very serious issue in, in the church at Corinth. And this issue is... The fact that, that they have become divided 
in their opinions. They're divided in how they think. They're divided in, that, in how they, they approach the faith. They're, they're attaching themselves to, to thoughts and attitudes. They're aligning with this teacher or in that position or this belief. And Paul is troubled by not only the division but the derision. You got people that are that in this community of faith that are going, no, 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 I, I believe in Apollos. And, and the others are going, no, 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 I believe in, in Paul. And, uh, and, and there was just this division among them. And when Paul hears about this and he writes to the church, he says, enough with the division. Enough with you attaching yourselves to a specific person or ideology. You see, it is about Jesus. It is who we represent. Not ourselves. Not our own cons human constructs. But Jesus. The more that we have to do is to be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit that brings us together as one unified body of Christ who live out in faith and love of Him and Him alone. Now, I, I, I will say I, I, I love my theology. I wouldn't teach my theology if I didn't love it. But the idea that we have here is that... that that love for the theology, which is a, a human construct, should not be greater than the love, genuinely loving Jesus. We live in a terribly troubled time. And there's a lot of uncertainty and questions, things that we ask ourselves. What is truth? What is not truth? Every time I say what is truth, my mind goes back to that, that movie, A Few Good Men, and, 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 and the, the colonel screaming at the, at the attorney who's questioning him, and, and he finally says, you can't handle the truth. I wonder if that's not what we are dealing with in the church today. Is an issue over truth. What is truth? Oh, I know but one truth, and that truth is Jesus Christ is Lord of all, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, and the third day he was raised from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. That's the unifying voice. The reason that I want us to be able to, to step into and speak with, with real compassion, not out of rote memory, but compassion, those things that unite us. The Lord's Prayer unites us. It's one prayer that we all know. The affirmation of faith called the Apostles' Creed, it's one affirmation that speaks to the very issues of faith that we embrace together and give us direction to be able to do ministry in this community and throughout the world. Paul was saying to the, those early believers, if anything, you need to understand that it is not about you, but it is about Jesus. And aligning with people or with a certain teacher, with a position or a belief, is going to lead you to ineffective outreach. Now, okay. Some may say, well, why are you preaching this? Folks, aligning ourselves with varying ideologies while attempting to pull the splinter out of another person's eye and ignoring the board in our own disrupts the call to be united under the cause of Christ. It is that very simple. I want you to understand that. 
I pray for the church, and I trust you do as well. I pray that together we can be that one voice that does what we've been called to do with every breath bring praise unto the Lord. It is my deep prayer that we as the church can find a way to be different in our ideology but united under our belief that Jesus Christ is one that the Lord our God is one and that we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That we focus in on making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world so that we can carry forth that very thing that has given life to the church for centuries. Now, it doesn't discount that that we will have a variety of opinions. We're going to have a variety of opinions. You can't get three people together in the same room and have them agree on the same thing. I just, that's facts. You can have three eyewitnesses to the same accident and you'll get three varied accounts. Now, there'll be some agreeing points, but there'll be varied accounts. We as a church are called to do something very important, and that is to focus our people on the commonality that binds us together and allows us to be an effective, faithful witness for Jesus. The Spirit plays that part in the more. You see, the more that we're unified, the more that we are one voice, the more that we are woven, tightly knit fibers that create a beautiful tapestry is so that we can bring awesome praise unto the Lord. Every beautiful garment, every beautiful piece of cloth, a tapestry, starts with a single thread. And as the different threads are woven together and added in, it becomes this beautiful thing that God can be honored by. You are that tapestry. You are a tapestry of faith that is woven together by a common love for Jesus. Do you love the Lord? Do you want to be called according to His purpose? Do you want to live out the faith in a way that, that is effective and fruitful? For years to come, then we have to be a part of the more. Being open to the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit continues to weave in a fabric that brings praise unto the Lord. I pray for our church. I pray for you as individuals of the church. As I said earlier, my wife and I are deeply grateful for your prayers for us, especially for Barbara. We know that God will take care of this, that he'll lead us in the right paths and we'll be with the right people in the right time, in the right place, and this will be managed. We believe that. But we believe something greater. We believe that Jesus Christ is the navigator of our spirit. And as our spirit is driven, our spirit is guided into the path the spirit desires us to take. I pray that for everyone here. 
that through your living, you will be that one voice. That you will be that one united part of the great church that makes disciples and that ultimately transforms the world. Let's put less of our thoughts on the ideologies and the theologies and the different positions. Let's put more focus on being the one voice. Just as I told the children, I ask of you, be a part of that creation that speaks in one voice, calling on the name of the Lord to move in us in a mighty way that we may do exactly what God wants us to do in the way God wants it done. That's the more. Are you ready for more? Pray about it. I invite you to come and talk to me about it. But let's make sure that, more importantly, we're on the same page with God this day and always. Amen and amen.